Hello and welcome to part 3 of Create Your Own 2D Character for Use with Unreal Engine 4 Tutorial. My name is Paul from Cryonetic and in today's video we will be animating our 2D character. Before I get started I would just like to apologize for the bad audio quality in the previous video. All my filters and everything were enabled, it just didn't render out. I do apologize and it will not happen again in the future. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is maybe I should enable screencast keys first. The first thing you want to do before you start with the animation of your character is actually just go into your renders tab and then here by frame rate, we're going to set a custom frame rate and I'm going to set this to 12 frames per second. This is my preference just based on simplicity and just the general movement of the character. If you, if you choose a higher frame rate as well, you'll be rendering out more images for use in, in Unreal Engine 4, which can increase the size of your character and just the complexity of setting it up if you want to blend animations or just change things later on. So for this, I would like to keep it at 12 frames per second. And with that said, uh, we're going to change our frame range to 24. And you'll see here in our timeline as well, we can also set this to 24, it's the same thing. So basically what's happening here is that we're saying that we're going to create an animation that is two seconds long. So the animation that I want to create is a simple run animation. Now, I can speed this up. I think uh, two seconds might be slightly long, but I just want to get a bit more um, smoother range of movement in the character itself. You can always later on change the frame rate, but uh, that will be for a later video. So what we're going to do here is first we're going to select our character. I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to rotate everything just slightly around so that the uh, all the body parts and everything match up. I'm going to select the eyes and the head and rotate them up. This arm I'm going to rotate backwards, this one forward, and then this leg I'm going to rotate forward and this one backward. All right, so it looks like his legs are actually longer than his, uh, shorter than his arms, uh, but that's okay. So once we've done all of that, you want to select everything. You can either do that by hitting A or you can just hold control and then mouse drag and select everything. And then here by the key ring tool here at the bottom, we're going to choose location, rotation and scale. And I'm just going to click add a keyframe. Now, if you move, you'll see that that is our base keyframe. That is the one that we start with. Now, your first step that you would want to do is actually then then immediately start moving things around and then changing and that's that's normally where i also make a mistake with blender you would have to set your next animation frame first in the timeline before making any edits because if you're going to move this afterwards it will just jump back to the original frame of animation so keep that in mind. It will save you a lot of headaches if you're working on something. Always set it in your timeline first and then do, do your adjustments and movements to your character. Okay, so I'm going to set this to 12. And then I'm going to select everything. I'm going to rotate it slightly back. Select this arm, rotate it forward. This one, rotate it backwards. And do this and do that. And maybe rotate the head up. Uh, it looks like a bit too much. And then we're going to add a keyframe. Oops. Okay, that's also another thing that uh, I made a mistake with. Luckily, I could undo it. When you add a keyframe, make sure you select everything. And then you add a keyframe. Okay, so now if I play it, you should see... There we go. That's the first part of our animation. Now, also, if you decide that, okay, the movement, you're not too happy with it on one particular part, you can just go back to that frame and then move that to a different one and then keyframe that particular piece individually and that will be the only one that changes. So it's slightly different than using bones and armatures for animation. Uh, it's, it's a bit more limited, but it does actually um, get the job done for the purposes of a 2D character. Okay, so now what we're going to do 
This might seem slightly strange, but now we have to get back to our base pose because we want this character to loop animation. And with having an armature, that would be significantly easier because you can just copy the armature location and just paste it over and it will go back to the original animation. With this, I found that the only way that I found to do it quickly and easily was to go to the, um, if you have 24 frames in your animation, go to frame 25. But first, we're going to go to frame 1. We're going to select everything, hit Control c then we're going to go to frame 25, just make sure that you're on frame 25, or the frame after your animation is finished. And then select everything, and we're going to delete it. Then still on frame 25, hit Ctrl V to paste, and then we're going to add a keyframe. Now, you might think that we deleted the entire original animation, but that's not how this, this type of animation works in Blender. So let's go back to the base and push play. And there we go, there's an animation. So what I'm going to explain what happened here is effectively Blender renders everything that you set keyframes for. So let's say I set keyframe here, I can move in a different asset uh, from a, another place and I can set the keyframe, it will suddenly just appear in existence in, in your animation. And the same with deleting something. So what I did here is Effectively, when you go to frame 25, what will happen is that it will switch between these animations eventually getting to that one on frame 25. So that just, just helps a little bit. And the reason I picked frame 25 was because if I picked frame 24, you would get like a slight um, stutter in your animation because frame 1 and frame 24 would have been exactly the same. Uh, because we copy and paste it from frame one. So it would have been like a slight pause in the transition in your animation. So that's why you just want to paste one frame ahead and then you eliminate that uh, stutter completely. So it makes it significantly easier. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to render out this animation. So what I'm going to do is just add a camera. You can just deselect everything, hit Shift A, and we're going to add a camera. Then I'm going to go push zero. Wait, wait. First push seven. Go into the view that I want here. And then it is control, control, alt, zero. Let's try that again. Come on. Control, alt, zero. Okay. Not quite what I wanted. Let's zoom out a bit. Control, alt, zero. There we go. So what this does, this is basically uh, you add a camera and then when you push control alt zero it adds the camera to your current viewport or your current view so if I view from here I can add the camera and so on but uh, so we want it from this angle if we push zero we can see exactly the parts that it will render out so what I'm going to do now is I want to set the resolution so the Y resolution which is the height I actually want to be higher because our character is actually larger in his height than what he is in its width. So, and then this one I'm going to set to 256. So I want to keep it fairly small um, resolution. If you want to use a higher resolution, you're more than welcome to do that. But keep in mind, again, size constraints. Uh, if you're going to create a, a bunch of these 2D characters, it might not actually uh, be good to use high resolution characters. So. Uh, I'm just going to set the resolution scale to 100%, so it actually renders at 512 and 256. And then I would just want to select my camera. We can do this just by actually right-clicking on it over here. Or going into side view, right-click and then push zero. And then go into my camera tools over there. And then we're going to set the view to orthographic. And then we can set the orthographic scale. There we go, and let's just see. So what we're doing here is effectively just seeing how far uh, in the bounds we can keep the character. It would just make our editing of the character inside uh, Unreal Engine 4 slightly easier. So let's just see here. Okay, that looks okay. 
So we've managed to set everything up. We have our character. We can maybe, maybe, let's just see here. Maybe we should move him slightly like that so that he's a bit more center. And we could do the same over here so that he's slightly a bit more center. And now we're going to render out our animations. But before we render out, we just want to go into our render layers and disable the sky. The reason why we're disabling the sky is if you render with a sky, even though you haven't added anything into your scene other than the camera and, and the character, it will render a gray or a black background behind your character. And we don't want that. We actually want to use it as an alpha channel. So we don't want anything that is not visible to, to render at all. So the only thing that we want is our character to render out. Then with the sky disabled, we're going to go into the renders tab. We're just going to make sure that RGBA is selected so that we have an alpha channel. PNG should be fine. And then I'm just going to open a folder uh, where you want to save your animation. So if you're going to create a whole bunch of these, make sure that you keep it um, in a proper naming convention. So I made a folder here called run animation. Just going to accept that. And I'm going to click the animation tool in the renders tab to render it out. And there we go. And if I jump over to this, you'll see, there it is nicely rendered out. So what we're going to do from here is just, let's just go back into 3D mode. What I tend to do is with my animations like this, I like to save them as separate copies of one another. So I'm going to go into uh, the 2D character, run animation, and I'm going to save my blend file as the run animation. Because we're not using an, an armature, what, what ends up happening is every single time that we want to create the animation, we either just have to like duplicate our character completely and move them to a different layer and then change everything from there. So you can do that. I tend to just save everything as a separate animation. But what makes it nice is then I can open two instances of Blender and then just keep going back and forth between the different animations that I've created with um, out in my, many problems or anything like that. So this is kind of a downfall of not using an armature for this type of animation. I, I'm, I'm not too sure if there's a different method to render it out. I don't see much of a problem with it because I've kind of worked it into my workflow. So um, it's to me, it works fine. So. Uh, one more thing that you can do from here is we can just actually open GIMP. And then in GIMP, you can click File, Open Layers, and I think this might be it, but let's just make sure. Let me just navigate. And you can select everything and open it, and then it should open all your animations onto these layers. And then you can kind of see where your bounds are. So if you want to then maybe change the canvas size so that you can actually utilize this space or just get rid of the space completely. And then you can just check over here, I think. And then just move everything until you get like the appropriate size that you want. It all really depends on what you want to do. But you kind of like can just crop and move your character around until you get like the perfect positioning and if you click OK and you see that it might move some so it's slightly smaller so if you want to then just touch up but it shouldn't be necessary it's not actually drawing any of that so uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much but that's just if you want to get any everything to a certain size or you want everything to look a certain way you're more than welcome to do that all right with that said uh, I'm done with this part of the tutorial and the next one we'll be importing this into Unreal Engine 4 and then using the flipbook to actually make a proper animation that we can use for a 2D character. So if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading more videos uh, soon. So uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment and I will see all of you in the next video. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.